Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we will give one or two minutes for the rest of the attendees to jump uh, to the webinar, and we will be able to start. Okay, so hello everyone. I trust you're all doing well uh, and staying safe during these turbulent times. My name is Tamara and I'm part of the EMEA account executive team. And I would like to thank you for joining our uh, webinar with our partner DOA, three ways to maximize revenue with your hyper-converged infrastructure. And please let me introduce you to our speakers, uh, Vladimir Porohov, Product Manager for the Virtuoso Infrastructure Platform at Virtuoso, and Dmitry Lautov, Co-Founder and Managing Partner at DIA And we will also be joined by Alexander Ragel, Managing Partner at DIA uh, for the Q&A session. So as part of today's webinar, we will go over three winner tactics for better TCO for your hyper-converged infrastructure and ways to boost your sales with HCI cluster appliance. Namely, from TCO angle, we will tackle ways to increase marginality of services by reducing your hardware costs. We will discuss licensing cost optimization with agile business model and we will go over ways to open new revenue streams by enabling new use cases such as a robo appliance, managed Kubernetes and other use cases. We will uh, stop two times during the webinar for Q&A session. Uh, so all questions uh, are answered and uh, please uh, don't hesitate to use the chat option um, for questions. Before we start, I would like to say a few words about Virtuoso uh, to some of you new to our company. Uh, Virtuoso is a pioneer in virtualization technology with 20 years experience in software business. We started with uh, system containers and eventually extended our portfolio and solution stack to virtual machine virtualization, software defined storage and hyperconverged solution. Presently, we are a vital member and a number four contributor to the Quemo KVM community. In the year 2000, our breakthrough container technology allowed service providers and hosters to drastically save on infrastructure and increase marginality of services. We're bringing our hoster and service provider DNA to the enterprise and telecom world, powering over 450 businesses all over the world. Among our customers are large and medium service providers such as GoDaddy, uh, One and One Ionos, MyLock, telecom operators such as America Movil, Portugal Telecom, Telecom Italia, 
and from the enterprise world, uh, Tata Corporation, and many more businesses powered by our MSP customers. I will now pass on to Dima uh, to speak about Diaway and our joint HCI appliance solution. Dima, to you now. Thank you, Tamara. Let me tell you a few words about Diaway. Diaway is a big data storage and networking integrator. The company designs, deploys, and optimizes systems, software, and storage solutions that enable enterprises, cloud providers, and software companies to generate more value from their data. As you can see, we helped quite a few leaders to save millions of dollars on the right sizing of hardware for their IT infrastructure. And we are proud to be official partner for Western Digital, AMD, and other global hardware and software vendors. Let's look at the HCI trends. The global hyperconverged infrastructure market size is expected to grow up to 70 billion in the next three years at an unprecedented growth rate of over 32% during the forecast period. If you look at uh, HCI global market trends, hardware is accounted for the 34% of the total cost of ownership, with the trend to decrease in significantly by 2027 to 32%. This is exactly why it is important to learn how to optimize the infrastructure now. This gives uh, you competitive advantage that would help you capture a bigger market share. With Diaway and Virtuoso Hyperconverged Infrastructure Appliance, we are able to provide significant total cost of ownership benefits on the software licensing and on hardware level, optimizing the hardware costs by 15% against the current market trends. Let's start with planning the hardware architecture and go over the free hyperconverged infrastructure mistakes and uh, how to turn them how to turn them into revenue opportunities and cost optimization. Uh, working with multiple companies across the globe, we learned that many of them are making the same mistakes in planning and building their infrastructures, and those are losing millions of dollars. There's no single commonality that we can pick up. We can outline a few examples. So the first myth, the bigger the supplier, the bigger the discount. And um, for the next two myths, let's imagine that we already have the best possible infrastructure design that saves us money on the entire life cycle. And we, the, the only way to optimize total cost of ownership is to drop down the hardware cost. Well, the reality is very different and uh, it can be a general rule if there were not so many exceptions. Let me provide you an example of such an exception. One of our customers used to buy servers from one well-known American manufacturer directly. However, it turned out that our terms were much better for the exactly the same hardware and they switched to us. Obviously, Diaway as a company is thousand times as less compared to this manufacturer Yet it turns out that our offers are better to the end customer. And of course, there's no magic and the plain truth boils down to manufacturer pricing tier they are getting, lower flexibility on components cost optimization and probably inflated expectation on margin levels. Let's talk about the second myth. So, now we see that the strategy of choosing the biggest supplier is not quite right. 
then probably the tender for each purchase is the way to go for the best price. And there's an option, there's an opinion that a competition can be beneficial to the client. You know, when many suppliers fight to win one big account. Before we proceed to busting this myth, to all that are with us and listening to the webinar, you can use a Q&A tab and ask the question and make comments. Uh, the, the reality might seem illogical at first. Uh, let's talk about the pricing. I believe there's no doubt that fair pricing depends on the annual volume tier. That's why no one argues the fact the bigger the annual volume, the bigger the annual volume, the greater the discount. Now, let's imagine the customer uses how we call it opportunistic procurement on every single order. And uh, then none among the suppliers can use the entire annual forecasted volume to deliver the best possible price for the customer. This is because the volume is always split across multiple suppliers. But when both supplier and customer consider the infrastructure growth as a project, the fair pricing will be defined based on the forecasted volume. And the reality is that trusted partnership is what secures the best pricing, not tender procedures on every incremental infrastructure growth stage. The third concept I would like to discuss is called the cheaper, the hardware, the lower total cost of ownership. And if we are focused on the cheaper hardware for hyperconverged infrastructure, we believe that the overall pricing will be lower. Like make every piece cheaper to make cheaper the whole cluster. It sounds very logical, doesn't it? And uh, we had a similar case, a good example of this myth we may highlight with our case study with Rush Files. When Rush Files started the project, they had disaggregated compute and storage. Dive was engaged in the project and we made total cost of ownership comparison of existing infrastructure and newly suggested design. And surprise, it turned out that cheaper hardware has many hidden costs for maintenance, lower reliability and outages that leads to a much higher cost of ownership. You can go to the DIAway website and download this case study to learn more or ask us any questions during the Q&A session. In the provided example, you can see that we have replaced disaggregated compute and scale up storage with hyperconverged virtuoso infrastructure cluster to significantly lower the overall total cost of ownership. And everything we discussed earlier, the project approach to infrastructure sizing, we call it economics, techniques plus economics. We always use this approach for infrastructure optimizations. It is built around a few key elements. The first one is consolidated total cost of ownership metric. For hyperconverged infrastructure, uh, virtual machine usable resources costs are key metrics. This, the second component is initial footprint and project ramp. And the third one is right size building block. And let me cover these uh, three components in more detail. It's quite important to consider all costs involved, including data center costs, 
and build the financial model based on usable resources, based on uh, uh, raw cap best based on uh, useful capacity, not on raw capacity as many hardware vendors do. Uh, use uh, usable RAM instead of physical RAM. Use uh, virtual CPUs instead of physical cores. And the, the cluster should be designed to tolerate one node going down without the performance degradation. These fault tolerance reserved resources must be taken into consideration during design and planning stage. And uh, these fault tolerance reserved res resources depend on the cluster size. The hyperconverged infrastructure cluster likes to be bigger to have less penalty. So now the forecast is a key here because forecast determines the building block to select and this choice will directly impact the total cost of ownership over the life cycle term. And uh, building block defines the whole economics. It is critically important to be hands-on with new technologies as they let you build right-sized building block better and with more efficiency. I would like to present you Diaway's four-node flagship appliance validated and optimized for a virtuoso infrastructure platform. Two U for nodes design was carefully selected due to three key reasons. Uh, the first reason is lower total cost of ownership. Uh, this design saves both rack space and power. And uh, let's let's discuss the components. So why did we choose AMD Apex CPUs? Uh, this CPUs has better price per performance ratio, has much more innovation, like eight channel uh, RAM memory with uh, 3200 megahertz and uh, 128 PCI lanes per socket. And uh, we designed our appliance with NVMe drives because NVMe provides five times more read performance, higher read performance, and two times higher write performance, and um, be better total cost of ownership than uh, SATA SSD drives. And in addition to our flagship four node appliance, we provide a variety of appliance configuration options. Thus, depending on your use case, and your customer vertical, we would be able to offer appliance options for mission critical data and GDPR compliance, private cloud providers scalable horizontally and vertically, and appliance for digital, digital transformation projects. Preconfigured options as illustrated in the slide or custom tailored appliance configuration is available. Our appliance provides astonishing performance illustrated in the slides. Illustrated in the slides are performance benchmarks for, from our flagship four node appliance. Uh, this performance is scalable and linear and uh, can be predicted based on the total number of nodes. And uh, you may roughly estimate eight nodes cluster with doubled numbers, uh, doubled numbers uh, compared to four node appliance. Thus with uh, eight nodes, you will exceed one million ops, even with random read, write, mixed workloads, which is not bad. Also, we expect up to 30% performance growth with next generation of NVMe drives that we are going to deliver starting late May. Uh, and now, 
we are excited to present to present you the Daiwa appliance calculator that was built with economics in mind for best performance appliance and lowest possible TCO. So, uh, as I mentioned before about uh, usable resources, you can select the required number of virtual CPUs. Uh, you can select uh, the required amount, uh, re required uh, virtual machine RAM volume, and you can uh, select the required uh, usable NVMe drive capacity. So, uh, based on, uh, on these requirements, the calculator automati automatically uh, shows the complete uh, total cost of ownership breakdown and uh, automatically calculates the key metrics that I mentioned before. Uh, so you can see the price per uh, GB for storage, price per virtual core, price per GB of RAM, and um, you can also select the total cost of ownership term, like three years or five years, and you can uh, choose data center location to calculate properly the uh, data center costs based on the real, real uh, power draw numbers. Also, for the selected uh, se selected uh, uh, re resources that uh, for the selected resources, uh, uh, you can see full data sheet for and with a complete breakdown, including network uh, networking option specifications. And um, so that's that's basically it for the sizer. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. And let's let's proceed with the Q and A session. Uh, let me let me check the questions. So there's a question. Uh, in case I have an existing infrastructure that is still good, what are my options to get started with the joint solution? Uh, and um, the action plan uh, will be determined by uh, total cost of ownership analysis. It will, it will show the optimal way if it's to keep the old infrastructure using old and new in the mix or go with the new setup. Once we have the, uh, once we have the detailed breakdown on, on the basis of analysis, we will see the right way. So it can be either the mix of old infrastructure and new infrastructure, or it will be, uh, New, uh, completely new infrastructure from scratch. It depends on the um, economics that we will calculate for the specific case. Dima, can I add something uh, about it? Yes, sure. So uh, I would like to add that uh, our solution, um, yes, this is hyperconverged solution, but um, in comparison with other hyperconverged solution, you don't, uh, you don't. Um, have to use the same nodes and the same roles for all your nodes. So for example, in your uh, cluster, you can have some nodes dedicated only for compute and in other nodes dedicated only for storage. So if you already have your own infrastructure, 
you can uh, integrate it with uh, the new cost-effective solution from DIA, from the new appliance from DIA. It's also possible. You don't uh, you don't have to use the same uh, nodes, the same architecture for all your workloads in uh, Virtual Infrastructure Platform. Uh, There's another uh, question in Q and A. Um, uh, must I always extend with four nodes after the first deployment, or can I also extend with two or so? Well, actually, it depends on the uh, requirements. But in case we are talking about uh, um, our uh, hyperconvergent appliance, um, it designed to have four nodes in one chassis. So the uh, minimal scale step is four nodes. Um, but if we are speaking about um, um, uh, storage uh, nodes, options for digital transformation like uh, Vladimir just mentioned, then we can scale um, using a single node as a scale step. So it's, it, it really depends on the requirements. Yeah, but, actually, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Dima, please. Uh, but, but actually for, for, uh, for the hyperconverged infrastructure appliance, all in VME, uh, it's, it's better to s scale with four nodes because the cluster likes to be big, uh, to have less penalty. And uh, from the financial perspective, the this design, I mean, four nodes into you uh, saves uh, saves uh, money on power consumption, on the initial investment. So it makes sense to proceed with uh, uh, four node scale step. But of course, it depends on the specific case, on on the forecast growth and so on. Okay, uh, and now uh, we will review the benefits of uh, oh, another question. Do we have time, Vladimir? I think yes, we should answer the question. Uh, do you recommend to mix AMD and Intel CPUs? Will mixing CPU uh, types case issue during maintenance and migration, evacuation VMs inside the cluster? I guess uh, we will postpone this uh, question till uh, to another Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Actually, yes, uh, uh, I will have um, a slide and we, uh, we have a special feature for that uh, to allow you to mix uh, uh, different spew. So in theory, it's possible, but I, I think, uh, Dima, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think it's, we can consider it as a recommended approach because it, um, in this case, you will have uh, uh, not technical issues, but administrative issues. Right. Some unwanted side side effects, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But in theory, it's possible. Yes, and I will describe how to do it in uh, Virtual Infrastructure Platform. Okay. Uh, now uh, we will review the benefits of the Virtual Infrastructure Platform. Uh, Vladimir, to you now. So I stop sharing the screen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dima. Okay. I will share my screen now. So, Dima, does it work? Right. So, uh, let me uh, give you a brief overview about Virtual Infrastructure Platform. And uh, after that, I will show you a quick demo how uh, it looks like for your customers, for end users, and what services you can build on top of our platform. So, 
if you are a service provider or if you are a managed service provider, what options do you have to build your own public cloud for your customers? Uh, the first option you have is obviously to, uh, to go with um, uh, some solutions like VMware, some commercial solutions like VMware. Uh, this approach has some obvious disadvantages like cost. You know that uh, solutions like this are very, uh, are not cost effective, I would say, and very expensive for you and finally for your customers. And uh, uh, there is also a disadvantage because you need to build this solution uh, from scratch, you need to combine in one solution, in a single solution, multiple software. You need to, uh, to build a storage, you need to build uh, a virtualization, you need to add um, cloud on top of it with self-service. So it takes time and it's complex. The second approach you have is to use open source software. Uh, for example, OpenStack. You know that our solution is also based on OpenStack, but in case you use your own OpenStack, actually it's uh, quite easy to install it. But it's absolutely different story when you want to update it and when you want to change something, for example, to add new features. For example, there is no standard way to upgrade OpenStack from one version to another. There is no standard way to deploy, for example, uh, Ceph as an open source uh, storage solution. Or there is no standard way to integrate third party billing platforms with OpenStack. So in theory, it's possible. In practice, you have to have your own developers, not, not engineers, but developers to build this solution. And uh, the third approach, of course, is to go with uh, hyperscal hyperscalers. You can just resell Azure or AWS. But um, um, finally, if you go this way, of course, there is a value of you to building, to onboarding customers, to help them to uh, build solution on top of Azure or AWS. Uh, but finally, your customers go directly to AWS or Azure and you will lose them. In our solution in Virtuoso Infrastructure Platform, we combine benefits of all the solution and in VIP you won't have uh, drawbacks of, uh, of such solutions. So in Virtuoso, in Virtuoso Infrastructure Platform, you have a single hyper-converged solution that is easy to install, easy to upgrade, and it includes all features you need to build multiple uh, public cloud scenarios. Our solution consists of uh, our own software-defined storage, Virtuoso storage. It also uh, includes virtualization based on KVM, and uh, on top of that, we use OpenStack as a management and as a uh, software defined networking. Plus we have our own administrative UI that allows you to manage all uh, Virtuoso infrastructure platform components. So you don't need to go to uh, OpenStack command line to manage it. While uh, you have OpenStack API and you can use OpenStack API, for third-party software integration or some kind of automation if you need it. As a monitoring, we use uh, Prometheus and Grafana open source tools with some predefined uh, screens from us, but you can uh, add your own metrics to Grafana to be able to monitor your solution. And of course, we have our own self-service interface, self-service portal that allows you uh, to give this portal to your uh, end users, to your customers, and they will be able to use uh, multiple types of cloud services. And as a platform as a service components, we also have Kubernetes as a service on top of it. 
what type of services uh, you can build on top of Virtuoso infrastructure platform. Actually, uh, Virtuoso infrastructure platform can be uh, a part of your private cloud or public cloud. So if you need to build a dedicated uh, private cloud solution for your customers, you can do it with Virtuoso infrastructure platform. Or if you want to build a public cloud, you can do it also with us because we support uh, multi-tenancy in our product and we have self-service that you can give to your customers. Uh, and in any case, you will have, you will be able to install it the easy way. You don't need to install separate components for OpenStack, KVM or storage or network. You can install it as a single solution. Uh, as, for features, as for features, you will have uh, virtual networking, you will have infrastructure management. We also have some important features like uh, virtual machine placement rules that allows you to uh, cut your cost on Microsoft licensing, for example. This feature allows you to uh, define some nodes that you can use only for uh, Windows virtual machines. And to license those vir Windows virtual machines, uh, you can use, for example, uh, Microsoft Windows data, uh, Server Data Center Edition, and you don't need to buy those licenses for all your servers. You need to buy those licenses only for servers you uh, attach a displacement, uh, displacement rule. Also, you can use displacement rules uh, for the case we discussed previously, you can use it to separate your Intel and AMD nodes. For example, you can create two types of um, cloud offerings, one offering based on Intel, another offering based on AMD. And this feature allows you to distribute your workloads according to uh, your cloud offerings to AMD or Intel sockets. Also, we support such features like uh, load balancing. So in case your customer uh, wants to have um, balancing between multiple nodes for some kind of um, web application, your customer doesn't need to build his own load balancer because he can use our integrated load balancer for that. Uh, and of course, uh, as for other features, we have manage Kubernetes or Kubernetes as a service, but also uh, is available from our uh, self-service portal. And uh, it integrate, uh, our managed Kubernetes integrated with our platform. So you can use such features like uh, persistent volumes in Kubernetes. You can use uh, our load balancer as a service and you can manage all those features uh, from Kubernetes directly. We also, uh, but actually Virtuos infrastructure platform is not only about compute. It also includes some storage as a service. For example, we have um, our object storage compatible with Amazon S3 API. So you can build object storage offering based on Virtuos infrastructure platform. It also has uh, its own self-service interface. So you don't need to build your own. Uh, we also uh, support NFS is a service, we support iSkyZ as a service. So you can use Virtuos infrastructure platform as a single storage solution for all types of uh, storage workloads you have in your data center. And of course, for all types of, um, for our solution, for all types of uh, our services, we support standard OpenStack API and we support uh, different types of uh, third party billing systems. Uh, of course, Virtuos infrastructure platform can be used for different types of public cloud services. It could be shared hosting, it could be uh, cheap hosting, but uh, if you talk about managed service providers, I believe uh, the most interesting part is to use uh, Virtuos infrastructure platform as an infrastructure for your enterprise customers. And if we talk about business critical applications, it's absolutely different story. In this case, uh, we have all features you need to support uh, those kind of applications. We have high availability for your virtual machines by default. 
We have application casting snapshots. Very important feature, we allow you to up upgrade virtuose infrastructure platform without need to reboot the node, without need to uh, migrate virtual machines. System will do it automatically. Just need to click one button in uh, virtuose infrastructure platform interface. And it's a very important part that we have. Uh, very important part of the solution is uh, uh, storage and virtualization component support. If you build your own solution based on KVM or Ceph or OpenStack, you need to support all components, including storage and KVM. In our case, we are a uh, top four contributor in Camo KVM upstream, so we can support and, up and upgrade this solution accordingly. The other service uh, we would like to introduce is uh, Workspace as a Service from Virtuoso. What is Workspace as a Service? So it's a, it could be a VDI solution, it could be a RDS solution or published applications, but anyway, it will be the same windows your customers use every day. And this solution allows them to use any type of uh, client software, it could be uh, Mac OS, Windows, Android, or iOS device to access their everyday applications. Uh, today with uh, uh, coronavirus situation, we see a lot of demand for such kind of solution from our market, from our customers. So we decided also to introduce the service. Uh, what is workspace as a service from technical point of view? We are not going to develop a new solution here we introduce a bundle of Virtuoso infrastructure platform and parallels remote application server. We uh, provide you uh, solution architecture to build this multi-tenant workspaces service solution. We can also give you all sales and marketing materials that you need to promote this solution to your customers. Uh, actually, this solution is really easy to install you don't need any specific uh, experience to build it. But if you want, our professional services can also deploy it for you. And uh, two very important things. We provide the single licensing and support for this solution. So um, you can buy all licenses for this solution from us, for VIP and for parallels. And you can pay for the solution according to pay the go model. So no any uh, prepayments or something like that. And also we, we support the whole solution. We support VIP and parallels. So you can, uh, with any questions regarding support, you can go also to us. Um, as a benefits, what will, uh, what will you get? You will be able uh, to use a solution that provides traditional uh, VDI that provides uh, remote desktop sessions and published applications in a single solution. And it supports multi-tenancy. So you can use the shared environment for all your customers. Solution uh, is tailored for server, uh, for service providers. So we, we give you a ready to use architecture that you can use to build this multi-tenant solution. Um, as I said, you can also use deployment services from Virtuoso to build it, or you can use, uh, do it on your own. And um, this solution is very flexible in terms of licensing and support. And of course, uh, as your customers don't need just uh, the simple virtual machine with, with uh, Windows environment, your customers, of course, need to have uh, ready to use uh, desktop solution with office applications, with uh, cloud storage and so on. So you can do additional business by adding such solutions like office, office applications, it could be open source or Microsoft Office. You can add cloud storage based on our S3 capabilities, for example, or you can use antivirus or other solution like this for security. Uh, we also have additional use case for that, uh, robo-appliance. 
And uh, Dima, could you please describe it? Thank you, Vladimir. Indeed, the Roba appliances provides unprecedented optimization in terms of infrastructure planning and uh, is the best fit for branch offices. And um, are you opening a new office location or are you extending the infrastructure in your current location? Diaway, hyperconverged uh, robo appliance is optimized solution regardless of the business reason. For a branch office, a customer may substitute the legacy bare metal servers with a single uh, robo HCI appliance. We have already took the burden of playing optimal hardware. This setup paired with compute and SDS capabilities of uh, Virtuoso solutions and all features of the Virtuoso infrastructure platform are, av are available for the Diave Robo appliance, except of course uh, the high availability storage. Naturally, as a storage uh, high availability implies at least three nodes. Correct, Vladimir? Yes, yes. For availability, you need at least three nodes, yes. Okay, let's proceed with... Yeah, so a few words about uh, licensing of Virtuoso Infrastructure Platform. Uh, in our solution, we have two types of licenses for compute and for storage. Uh, and both uh, licenses uh, are pay-as-you-go. So for example, for, uh, for compute, you pay only for the memory, RAM, for running virtual machines. That means if your customer runs uh, a virtual machine with four gigabytes of memory, you pay to us only for four gigabytes of memory per hour. The same thing for storage. You pay to Virtuoso only for used storage for your virtual machines, for your uh, volumes, uh, snapshots, and, and so on. Anyway, you have pay to go licensing and you pay only for, for the resources you can sell to your customers. Now I will show you a quick demo of our solution. Let me switch to another screen. So I will show you how the solution looks like for your customers, for your end users. Uh, this is a self-service portal for customers. I will log into it. And here we have our self-service interface. I, al I already have a lot of uh, virtual machines and services deployed here. Uh, what services we have? We have virtual machine, infrastructure as a service. So you can create your virtual machine here. For example, it will be test VM. You can deploy it uh, actually, we use the same approach like Amazon here. So you can deploy this virtual machine from image, pre-uploaded image, or you can deploy it from existing volumes based on another virtual machine, for example. So I will do it. I will create it from image. It could be CentOS, for example. Next, you need to specify the flavor. Flavor means the size of your virtual machine, number of CPUs and memory. For example, it could be medium. And you need to add the network. We support, uh, here you can add public network. Public network in this case means network with public IP addresses. Or you can add, you can use your own uh, private network created in your project. And deploy the machine. It takes some time to deploy it. While it's deploying, I'll go to networks and show you how to work with uh, networks here. Here you see multiple networks. 
you see a metering private network. This is a private network for my project, for me as a customer. And you also see two public networks. You have, uh, we have public network with some public IP addresses and another public network with different IP addresses. So if you need to create additional private network, you can do it here and define any IP subnet you want. You can enable DHCP server for this network to assign IP addresses automatically to new virtual machines. You can also enable allocation pool to specify the IP address to assign. And select DNS server. So after that, you will have a new private network available uh, for your virtual machines, for your workloads in this environment. Also, we have Kubernetes as a service here. So create, you can create a new Kubernetes cluster with high availability, with multiple uh, workers. It's really easy to do. You need to select a version of your Kubernetes, add the cluster name, select your uh, SSH key to access nodes in your Kubernetes cluster, the network. Here, if you want to uh, give your users access directly to Kubernetes machines, Kubernetes virtual machines, you can select to use floating IP addresses. And here you can also enable high availability for your uh, Kubernetes master nodes. For example, if you use this cluster for tests, you can disable it. And in this case, you need just one virtual machine for that. Or if it's a if um, you use this cluster in production, you should enable high availability. And in this case, in this case, you will have three virtual machines for your Kubernetes uh, master nodes. Here you can also define the storage policy for your cluster. We support multiple storage policies in our solution. For example, if you have different storage tiers like uh, SSD based tier and uh, rotational drives based tier, you can create multiple storage policy with different pricing. I will use SSD storage policy here. And next, you need to define the number of workers for Kubernetes cluster and size of your worker node. And that's it. After that, uh, you will have your Kubernetes cluster up and running. It takes time because uh, after that system will deploy multiple virtual machines. So it takes some time to deploy this cluster. Also, we have uh, a load balancer as a service here. And you can use this load balancer for your Kubernetes cluster. For example, in this case, if I enable high availability for my, for my Kubernetes cluster, system will, automat will automatically create a new load balancer for my master nodes. Or you can create your own load balancers here to balance traffic between uh, virtual machines. It's also really easy to deploy a new load balancer. If you enable high availability, in this case, system will create uh, two load balancers for high availability. You need to select the network, IP address optionally, and you need to define uh, the load balancing pool to select the traffic type, to select the ports, and balancing settings. And of course, add members for your balancing pool. By members, we mean uh, virtual machines here. Uh, also, in this interface, of course, you can manage volumes for your virtual machines. You can manage uh, 
floating IPs if you need to assign public IP address to your uh, virtual machine or Kubernetes cluster. And images to create new virtual machines. You can use our predefined images or you can add your own image here. This is uh, how a cell service interface for end users looks like. We also have uh, administrative interface, a separate interface for you as a service provider. And in this interface, uh, you can manage uh, the system itself or manage all projects you have in your cell service portal. Now I will switch again to the presentation. And we will be able to answer your uh, questions. I, I got the question from one of our guests regarding the uh, typical lead time for the appliance and uh, He's also asking if we have it with the software pre-installed, not. And um, uh, we should typically count in uh, four weeks. Now with the virus situation, this can take a bit longer. And uh, the software installation is optimal, optional and uh, can be arranged if needed. Vladimir, so, by yeah. the way, did, did mm -hmm. we address the, the question regarding different kind of CPUs? So yes, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, VM placement rules in our solution. So if you have two types of nodes with CPU and uh, with Intel and AMD CPUs, in this case, you can uh, assign Intel placement rule only to Intel-based nodes and MD placement rule to MD CPU based nodes and uh, create different um, images for that. So for example, you will have a CentOS image Intel based and CentOS image AMD based and system will, will, be, uh, will be able to automatically deploy Intel based image only on Intel nodes. So this is uh, um, as for um, this is from end user perspective. Uh, from uh, administrative perspective, so if you want to combine uh, nodes with AMD and Intel CPUs in one cluster, you won't be uh, you won't be able obviously to live migrate virtual machines from Intel nodes to AMD and vice versa. Uh, so for that. Uh, you can define a set of nodes in our solution and system won't try to live migrate virtual machines from one type of CPU to another. Actually, this approach also works not only uh, for AMD and Intel CPUs. It works only for different types of Intel CPUs, for example. If you have uh, old and uh, modern Intel CPUs, you can also combine them in a single cluster. But again, you won't be able to live migrate virtual machines between them. We have another question uh, regarding uh, the if we have uh, migration tools from VMware or Hyper-V to virtual infrastructure platform. So, uh, very good question. So uh, for that, we have a uh, different approach. For example, uh, uh, the simple approach is to use a um, standard migration tool called V2V migration. And this tool allows you to migrate uh, workloads from any type of uh, third-party hypervisor from VMware, Hyper-V, or third-party KVM or OpenStack to our solution. Or we also have uh, a partner solution from Hystex, 
that allows you to do it using uh, good looking interfaces. So it's up to you to use uh, open source solution for that or to use uh, high stacks. But high, high stacks is uh, like a more than like more DR solution rather than migration tool itself. <laughs> but it also allows to, uh, uh, it has uh, DR capabilities and it also has uh, migration capabilities. So using high stacks, you can migrate uh, workloads even from Amazon or Azure to virtual infrastructure platform. Okay, understood, understood. Uh, another question is about uh, uh, will Virtuoda workspace as a service ship as appliance? Uh, um. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, as I said, uh, Virtuoda workspace as a service, it's a bundle of Virtuoda infrastructure platform and uh, parallel remote application server. Uh, currently, uh, we are not going to ship it as appliance. But if you want to speed up the deployment, and uh, you want it right here, right now, our professional services can deploy it for you. And you will have uh, the same experience as, uh, as appliance. And we are working on the complete solution about it right yeah. now. So I also see another question about uh, robo appliance. If I have a robo appliance, can I use a central multi node cluster for DR? Uh, do I need an extra software to create DR solution? So uh, you can use any type of uh, virtuoso infrastructure platform for DR in this case. Uh, but uh, yes, you need to use uh, third party software, for example to create a DR solution. Robo appliance, of course, uh, could be part of this solution. Okay, understood. So DR is not built in uh, for such scenarios. Yes, currently it is not, uh, but we are working on it and uh, we expect that in later release, we will have it integrated with our solution. Okay, sounds good. So are there any other questions? So we already three minutes after five. So I think uh, if we're, uh, there are no any other questions, we can finish and uh, uh, <laughs> Dima, I believe you have uh, more questions to answer. Um, do you prefer to answer them right now or you will answer them directly in the mail? I, I would like to answer offline because we currently are out of time and out of schedule, but I will address the, that question uh, via email today. So thank you very much for attending the webinar. Feel free to write uh, the email to us and ask additional questions. Yeah, so um, you will have a uh, follow up an email after this webinar uh, with our contacts. So you will be able to ask us any questions you want. Thank you, for, uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye, so. take care. Bye.